Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So in this video I'd like to go over my Paladin tanking build, both for AoE and single target. This is based for module 21, but technically we haven't had any new gear as of yet, so it's using all the gear from module 20 with that vault of stars etc. So a quick disclaimer with this tanking build, you can build a tank pretty much any way you want. The best way to do it is to stack up as many defensive statistics as possible and thus you'll have the most defense and you'll be able to absorb the most damage. And then you need to make sure you're using all of the threat powers to gain that threat and the aggro on the enemies to make sure you get hit, not everybody else. And then there is another third layer. You can also also use buffs and debuffs to help your allies out whether it be making them deal more damage or making them survive better. That is entirely up to you. I'm mainly going to focus around building up your own tank so that it can be as survivable as possible. And then on from there, there are of course one or two choices which you may as well take like a debuff or buff power instead of stacking some offense statistics. So firstly, I'd like to give a special thank you to all of my channel members for helping me keep my channel going. So we jump to the powers of our character and this will be the bread and butter of what makes it whether you are going to be able to tank viably or not. Now I have two different builds. One is my single target build and the other one is my AOE build. So on the single target it looks like so. So you could literally just copy and paste this and now I'll go over why I choose those. So firstly we have our Oath Strike as our primary at will to have that increased threat. Effectively when we hit our targets we will be dealing a lot more damage, at least they will think we do, than just 25 magnitude. And therefore it will make us a lot easier to be able to hold aggro and it's also an AOE at will so you'll be able to hit multiple enemies that are in front of you. So this is our primary at will you want to swing whenever you're not casting let's say an encounter power or a daily power or blocking. For my secondary I just like using Radiant Slam to close that gap to get up close to the enemies having that range of 30 and you'll basically just rush towards them. Then for our encounter powers I'm primarily just using this is in single target my templar's wrath on the boss at the beginning of the fight you cast this like three times and then you know you're going to hold the aggro very comfortably if you somewhere or another do lose the aggro that's where you have vow of enmity let's say you die your threat meter is reduced to zero you have effectively done no damage after you're revived, so you need that Vial of Enmity for that hard taunt to place yourself at the top of the third threat list. Alternative is of course using Smite with Divine Challenger, but that means taking up one of these class feature slots along with using another power which will cost Divinity. Templar's Wrath is already doing that at quite a significant amount along with one of our class features which is this tab power. So thirdly I'm using Binding Oath for that survivability. The boss is going to hit you a lot, you're going to take a lot of damage so you're going to want to regenerate this shield which is 40% of your maximum HP that you can block again and by regenerating this up nice and quickly you're effectively healing yourself by your healing your shield which you can then block more damage. Also Binding Oath has the added effect that whenever you get hit you'll also hit your attackers back with that 65 magnitude and the duration is 12 seconds and then it's on a cooldown of 20 seconds so effectively you'll have a window of about 8 seconds where you can't have this active. You can of course use Sacred Weapon instead of Vow of Enmity if you're confident in your playstyle. If you know you're not going to die or you're not going to lose the aggro then I generally use Sacred Weapon instead of Vow as Vow really isn't too effective in the scheme of things if you can just keep stacking up your damage above the DPS and Sacred Weapon will help out with that. Of course if you're running like the Zariel trial where you need to switch aggro pretty quickly Smite with Divine Challenger is definitely superior especially when you're in that second phase where you have the two enemies you do not want to be hard taunting both of them so you can't use Vow of Enmity as a hard taunt. Then for our daily powers generally using Divine Judgment in that beginning of the fight to make sure we can sustain that aggro. Secondary daily I'm using Shield of Faith just to increase that survivability of allies during mechanics where they take an awful lot of damage and you combine this with this sheltering light to help out the healer a whole ton. Then for our mechanics we just have that block which is when you hold up your shield however you have this tab then when you press tab and block 
you activate this divine champion where you can block up to 60% of your maximum HP instead of just the 40 as is normal. So you want to make sure you use tab along with your shield to block those big damaging hits to maximize this shield. Then for our class features I'm using composure to regenerate that divinity faster and I'm also using aura of valor however if you're in a fight where there's lots of enemies like the gardener in the vault of stars the first boss I generally use aura of vengeance because whenever your allies get hit by enemies you'll hit them and that way you have a chance of taking the aggro from the enemy so for our feats on single target I'm using sacred shield to buff up sacred weapon if I use it the second pair of feats for single target doesn't matter at all Third set of feet, you want Divine Pursuit. Overall, in the long term of things, it's definitely a lot more divinity you will gain from this. Fourth set of feats, if you really need the survivability, Shield of the Gods, go for it. Otherwise, just helping the healer out to keep your allies alive is definitely better in my opinion. And Unyielding Champion, by far is the best last feat here, basically reducing the amount of divinity it drains and also increasing the shield block up to 60% of your maximum hit points. So now we move to my AoE setup and this is it here. Again, you can go and copy and paste it. You may notice I'm not actually using Temporal's Wrath for AoE. It's good when you know the enemies are going to spawn all around you. Let's say in the forest in the Vault of Stars. That's when I would use Templar's Wrath over Bane. Otherwise Bane is good for when the enemies are spread out. And the ability to have this free cast with Baneful Strikes just makes it a whole lot more useful. It makes it a lot easier to grab the attention of enemies that are far away from you. Since the range is 80 feet with a radius of 15 feet. And then back up I'm using Vow of Enmity as an additional ranged power just to grab the attention of enemies. And also Burning Light to give that stun to the enemies. When you're getting overwhelmed it's best to stun them so that they aren't dealing any damage to you and the healer then can catch up with healing your HP back to full. Otherwise I do have my setup as Divine Protector and this was mainly due to the Vault of Stars when you had that third mini boss within the maze and it had nearly hundreds of those quicklings and they would just swarm you and you would need this extra survivability with the Shield of the Gods and that's why I have that setup. And of course I'm also using Aura of Vengeance to make sure you can hit those enemies that let's say attack your allies and thus you're dealing more damage and making sure you hold the aggro. So we move to our statistics on our tank. What do you want to be stacking up? Well for single target and also AoE it's pretty much the same. Initially you want to get as much item lava as possible since this will give you the amount of maximum hit points and also damage. Damage equals aggro meaning you will grab the attention of the mobs a bit more easier. Now in these defensive stats you definitely want to start with prioritizing defense since defense will help you in all situations. It's a continual uptime. It doesn't have a chance that it's activated like with critical avoidance it will only benefit you when you get critically hit and deflect only when you actually deflect. To prioritize what defensive statistics and also hit points the order I like to put it in at the moment is stacking up first defense then awareness then your deflect and deflect severity as high as you can get them and lastly your critical avoidance with at the very last your maximum hit points. At this point we can get our item level over 60,000 which makes it very easy to get this hit points to a million already. The more hit points you have and the less amount of defense statistics you have this just means you're going to take more damage, hits are going to be bigger meaning it's going to be harder for the healer to heal you back up. Let's say you're at 2 million maximum hit points. You'll take a hit of let's say a million but if you had defense instead of having 2 million hit points let's say you had 50% defense and a million max HP that means you would reduce that hit by a half so instead of taking a million damage you would now only take 500,000 damage that still equates to basically the same amount of percentage hit points you're losing you're still losing half of your hit points from 2 million down to 1 million or from a million down to 500,000 this means the healer, instead of having to heal you a million to max, they're only going to have to heal you 500,000 to max. So you get my point and this is why you want to stack your defensive statistics before stacking hit points. So literally you can just stack up defensive statistics and forget about hit points altogether. In AoE 
You can lazily tank and just get surrounded by enemies if you have lots of awareness. But if you don't have a lot of awareness when you're fighting lots of enemies, try and stay on the outside of the enemies. That way nobody's flanking you and that way nobody actually deals combat advantage to you, to you and thus awareness is moot. You don't actually need it then. But in boss fights, bosses always have combat advantage damage against you. Whenever you see sword markers on incoming damage, that means they have combat advantage on you. So now we move to our gear and there are of course a few choices you want to look at. Some that will give you more damage and some that will give you more survivability and it's up to you which ones you want to choose. Now the setup I have here on my gear is not ideal. Keep that in mind. There are definitely a few gear choices that I should be using but I just haven't been managed to obtain them myself. For example my headpiece. Ideally I would either be using let's say the Chitter's Fangs but I just feel its damage output is so minimal it's not going to matter. You could use the Manticore's Helm piece here from the Chult Hunts or you could use from these Vault of Stars collections we have the Hardcore Voss and you could get this Turban of Shifting Sands and it's absolutely huge benefit within area fights where you have lots of enemies and you can just immediately pull them towards you and then your DPS can just unload on them when they're all in a nice tight group. I haven't managed to get it to drop so you can see I've got pretty much everything else except these two and this one just is not dropping for me. Then for my armor I'm using the Forest Guardian one giving that 7500 awareness when in a party. You can see I'll get another 6000 awareness when in a party and thus I'll gain that up to 75%. Then for my arms you want these Midnight Grips. It will give you that extra damage resistance and then for your feet you ideally want either the slips of the rain they're not as good in my opinion as these blessed whips of the shadow demon these whips of the shadow demon are not that easy to obtain so if you've got these slips of the rain i would just run with those instead but these wisps of the shadow demon give you basically 20 percent more hit points and will also give you three percent more defense in my opinion they're like the best boots for any tank right now. Of course, if you want to go the buffing route, there are other boots out there which will give extra defense to your ally. For my weapons, I'm used to using the mastered ones. Since we don't really need the extra damage resistance, let's say from Lionheart. So I can just use these and it will increase the outgoing healing damage and also increase the damage resistance of everybody in my party. Then for my neck, waist and artifact set, I'm using this dashing decoy set. It will give that extra awareness will reduce your damage and it will also increase your threat. All around really good but you'll need to stand still for three seconds to activate this. In area fights when you have lots of enemies you're generally running around a lot until you're completely surrounded that's generally when you stand still and that's when you need your maximum survivability so why not? Otherwise you can of course use like this Master Lichstone set. It's good, it will just give you more hit points and also has a little bit more item level. Then for our rings, ideally you could switch out if you don't have the main of the Manticore, you could switch to the legendary ring that would give you the Manticore's Bite. It's this one right here, the Living Silver Fern. Again, it's another one that just hasn't dropped for me. Another really good ring would be this one right here when you're against one target so this would be against a boss, you would gain that 5% awareness. Also a pretty decent one is when you cast your daily power, you increase your damage resistance by 5%. Good in let's say a trial when you're going to take a massive hit, you may as well increase that damage resistance as high as possible. But what I'm using is what I got. You can see I have this Queen's Silver Crowned Ring. I do like to switch it out for my Tanner's Leather Ring when I'm in a boss fight to give that Manticore's main bite, to give that extra damage at the beginning to make sure I can hold the aggro and then I'm also using the Fallen Lord's Tact for the extra critical avoidance and then also the bonus of that extra deflect every 30 seconds. It's uh, not great uptime but it is what it is and there's not really anything great out there. Shirt and pants just high item level as possible. My shirt here just gives me a chance to give me action points and my trousers give me the chance to also to give me action points. So both are pretty good. So for our artifacts, I'm just using the Storyteller Journals. They're still better than these higher item level ones of 450. Storyteller Journals will give you that extra hit when you crit, give you that extra percentage of power and max HP and also increasing your ability scores. So now we move to our modifications. Well, on our gear here on the left side, I'm using just maximum hit points. There are, I think, other defensive stats you can use here and if you need those, 
by all means do so. Then for my neck, waist and rings, I'm just using this awareness. There's nothing really better here. You could use stamina regen of 2.2%. It will help if you need that. Then for our weapon modifications, I'm using, of course, enhanced oat strike. Offhand, I'm using the stamina regen. You could use recharge speed as well. And I'm also using my stat of critical avoidance. Again, you could use deflect, HP, or even your deflect severity. And thinking back right now, I should probably use the deflect severity as that is a very hard stat to gain anyway. And for an AoE fight, instead of using the tenor's hardened leather ring, definitely recommend the ring of the condemned giving you that extra damage will be effective damage by generating threat when you run around for one second or more. You will continually burst out what the enemies will think is damage to them and thus you'll be easier to take aggro on all of those enemies. Then for our enchantments, for my armor enchantment, I'm mainly using an eclipse enchantment nowadays. It gives you that extra deflect chance of 8%, not too shabby, and also giving you the effect of immediately regenerating your shield to full every 60 seconds. Of course, there are definitely alternatives, and if you have a different armor enchantment, I wouldn't worry about it too much. There's like the negation, there's also the elven battle, there's also the shadow clad, all of those are pretty useful. For weapon enchantment, we may as well use a debuff enchantment. We don't need any extra damage since we generally rely on our powers to do that damage for us. So frost enchantment or a bronze wood, they're pretty neat as well. Then for our standard enchantments, we can use our darks in utility. You could also use azure for movement speed. For defense, I'm using assassins. You ideally want your three stat enchantments would give you three defense statistics like assassins like gigantics and there are definitely a multiple different ones out there as well just depends what stats they give you and what stats you need and in offense you want those single stat enchantments the reason is they'll give you more combined rating which will give you more defensive statistics so now we move to our companions and in both single target and aoe the setup here of the equip powers is the same along with my equipment. I'm just using the deflection one there, filled with arcane, same with my critical avoidance ones here. As for our equip powers, I'm using honed senses to give me that more awareness. Also using the golden deep crow for more awareness. You can of course use anything here that's going to give you more defensive statistics. In the end of the day, it's not really going to matter, but you want to look back again at my priority order of what statistics to take. I'm using my myconid for Critical avoidance and awareness using Regus for deflect and deflect severity. It's the only companion right now that does actually give you more deflect severity. We have Brunner, awareness and defense. And we're using the Wattler for more deflect. Then for our summoned companion, for single target, I use something like Drist to buff up allies damage. And I'm also using in AoE the intellect devourer just to stun enemies to make sure they aren't dealing a whole bunch of damage to my allies and will also help me with survivability because if the enemies are stunned then they're not dealing any more damage. Let's move on to our mounts and in our main tab here just use a combat power that's going to buff up your allies and also debuff the enemies. For example this magnificent inspiration there are so many others don't just go and choose something like the arcane siege volley that just does damage it's a bit useless. Then for our equip power I'm just using the deflection here definitely many other defensive statistic ones that you can be using just try and build around the ones you have and then for our stable here you do want to have those mythic insignias but let's be real they're so expensive they take a shit ton of time to grind out you ideally want to have a mix of evasion courage and also fortitude and that's really it you can see I'm only using fortitude in the places I have to and that is within those illuminated insignias. Then the rest is those evasion and courage and they will give you those defensive statistics of deflection and awareness and also those courage giving you that extra defense and critical avoidance. Then for our colors, of course you want all mythic ones. It will just give you a ton of item level. It will also give you some combined rating. It doesn't say but it's about 500 with the max rank mythic ones. Practical, doesn't matter. Crescent, you could either use at will or encounter power. Again, doesn't particularly matter. Then for our supportive, you could use stamina regen ideally. For our unified, just use incoming healing or you could use movement speed, of course. And then for our wayfaring, you ideally want that recharge speed. You could use action point gain, but recharge speed will just help you reduce the cooldowns on 
those encounter powers which are quite long for us. Then we go to our boons and in our campaign tab here you want all these HP and defensive statistics. Then you definitely want to pick Marathon Runner up along with Deflect Severity and then also these healing potion ones here. Lastly you go to like control resistance and also then the damage and the damage resistance against those enemy types. Tier 5 choose this forte along with either recharge speed or you could use stamina regen. Then for a master boon you ideally want focused retaliation. For our offense guild boon doesn't particularly matter for defense just use the ones you need. I currently don't need more awareness or defense so I'm just running with hit points and utility you ideally want this group heal bonus. It will give you the ability to give at your allies 75% of that healing potion and healing potions healing for 345,000 75% of that is nearly 300,000 heal to all your allies that is a big heal and definitely helps out your healer so I generally like to run that but if you might die just run with revive sickness instead it will make sure that you don't lose too much HP or damage whenever you gain those stacks of skulls and that's really it for my tank build now we do have a few buffs like our overloads. We do have a bulwark of brimstone. You could use the other one that reduces your physical damage taken. I just like the hit points as it gives more hit points, which just looks nice. And then we also have unholy protection, giving that critical avoidance and deflect chance. Then for our buff food, I'm just using these bunch here. They'll give us those defense statistics and also hit points. This one here is a lower alternative to guild food. You find it in Chult. Just gives move speed and hit points. Full Hammer's Elixir for deflection and deflect severity. Caprice for hit points and deflect. And also using the crafted potion of defense. Rank 4 giving that extra 3000 defense. And those give me the buffs of those stats. My defense is a good bit lower there because I'm using an offensive ring. So when we do go switch out to this one you can see it's very close to the cap there. Same with my deflect. My awareness is a bit shy however we can use that buff right there and that gives that 70%. Then we could of course use a feral velociraptor if we were in a party but that's just a dream. And then we have our critical avoidance and deflect severity. I do want to switch out my offhand artifact modification to deflect severity. Didn't actually realize it was here as a statistic. They must have changed that recently. And that's really it. Hopefully this build helps you out to give your tank some more survivability. Definitely some things here that are going to be just as useful for the barbarian tank and the fighter tank. So if you presented this well, consider leaving the video a like. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. I will see you guys around. Goodbye for now.